Hello and welcome back. Today we are doing a challenge video. So we've come out here back again in nature and today we're going to be shooting with the Canon kit lens, 75 to 300 millimeter. Many photographers have said the challenges of this lens with it being not very fast and it having image quality issues. Well, today we're gonna to be putting that to the test as it's the only lens I brought with me. So there's no other lenses if we want to capture something far away then we're just gonna have to use this lens it's all I've got so no excuses today we're gonna be going all out with this lens testing it on insects and animals birds everything we can find now as I mentioned this was a challenge video and to make it more of a challenge it's a very overcast day now I'm coming out from the trees here and you can probably see the sky is just white with clouds so there's actually a deer over in the distance. That's a long way away again. This would be where I'd use my Sigma 600 millimeter lens, but we'll see what we get with the kit lens. So you may or may not have noticed from that footage that I am on a golf course. So golf course is a great place to come. Um, golfers are always around on golf courses hitting their balls so obviously during the day it's quite hard to come and take photos but early morning like this there's no golfers but the wildlife is used to people being around minding their own business so the wildlife is relatively tame on a golf course. This means you can get so much closer to the wildlife than you can when you're out in the wild. Now, I'm only starting on the golf course. We'll be heading out into the true wild later, but we're just going to see if there is anything on the golf course and get some easy pickings to start with. So there were a few seagulls by this pond, um, probably digging up worms, it's quite a wet morning. So worms are quite easy to find. And then they took off. Um, it wasn't because of me, surprisingly, I thought I'd be the one that scared them off, but I was actually looking in the other direction and I heard them take off, so I turned around, took some photos. Um, I hope some of them came out all right. I took quite a few, so hopefully one or two of them will be good. <laughs> now I noticed heading over this way, there are some plants, because obviously we're doing all types of photography, Probably not landscape photography, that might be a bit far, but there's some purple flowers over here. So, not only can we take a photo of the flowers, but we can also take a photo of the insects on the flowers. Hopefully some bees will come and we can get some nice photos on these purple flowers, which I think you can see behind me. And we got some photos of the flowers and I did get one photo of a bee on the flowers. It's very difficult to get insects on the flowers. First of all, they didn't seem to be showing up that much. There was only one bee in total. But also the slow autofocus of the lens also makes it quite difficult to focus on the insects because the insects move very fast. So that's where the Nifty 50, for example, would come into play. It's much quicker at focusing, which makes it easier to catch the insects. So we're now leaving the golf course and we're going to see what else we can find in the wild. And I was just walking along this path, it's quite a woody path, and then down here at the side I noticed there's some red flowers just behind me, like red bobbly flowers. They don't look like flowers because they don't really have petals, they're just kind of beads, red beads, but we're going to see if we can get some nice photos of them and the contrast of them and the dark green of the ivy behind them. So it's very dark here, which means we're going to have to use a very low shutter speed to try and get the ISO a bit lower because it's going to be high. 
but hopefully we'll be able to pull it off. And we are now on the canal. So we went through a footpath where the flowers were to the canal. And I was just walking over the bridge, which you may be able to see behind me. And there was a gray lump at the side of the canal. And I was watching it. I wasn't sure if it was a bird or just like a tire, maybe something gray bag, who knows? Anyway, it turned out it was, it was a heron and it was hunting. And so it was totally still watching in the water, but it was indeed a heron. Um, I then took some photos at a huge distance. Here are my initial photos and I was like, is this all I'm going to get? Anyway, I then keep walking and the heron isn't afraid, which is surprising. Normally they fly off at any sign of a human, but I guess because it is a canal, he is used to people walking by. So I walked by, paying no attention to him, trying to get as close as possible because if you want to get close to animals, what you should do is you should act as if you're interested in something else so that they don't think you're interested in them and then when you're there at last minute you turn and take a photo but slowly make sure you do everything really slowly otherwise they jump now i can actually see the heron is still up further ahead of me he did fly off but he's clearly he just flew further down because i can see him again but he carried on hunting he walked up he was just walking up the canal so i could follow him and get in front of him predict where he was going to go and he seemed to make two attempts of actually hunting, of which only one of them was a success. Um, I don't know what he ate, it was so small I couldn't see it, but we will see if we can see it in the footage. Um, it was probably just like an insect or something, but yeah, we did catch the heron hunting. And you can see the video with this lens, I took some videos, because when an animal's hunting, videos are good to get it nice. You can get every frame and then you can take images from it if you wish. And so we filmed a few more hunts. I finally caught up with the heron and I was just too late because he'd just done his biggest hunt. He must have caught a proper fish because he seemed to swallow down quite a big thing. So this is all I got. Um, you can see his wings open from the large size of this prey item. But yeah, I'm not sure what it was. I only got the end of this catch. But we then carried on to film another three successful hunts and these were all straight after each other. So we're now going to carry on heading down. He went behind some reeds, which means we can't follow him. And uh, we're gonna see what else we can find. And for some reason, the microphone cut off for this clip. But what I was saying was, there were a few swans ahead of me on the canal. These swans we have followed through many of our videos, whether they were the first ever vlog I did with the challenge and how many birds we could find, or all of my wildlife walks pretty much. So we've seen these swans from when they were chicks and now they're all grown up. So here you can see the swans on my phone and now let's take some photos.
and we got some photos of the swans and then some ducks came along so we also took some photos of them and this lens is great when it comes to taking videos or photos on an area like a canal you see canals are very small bodies of water meaning that even if the birds go to the other side of the canal they're still not that far away that definitely helps when it comes to taking photos because you can still get the photos with a smaller lens whereas if we were on the river thames for example which is a much bigger river if you don't know then you would have to zoom so much further and this lens wouldn't be able to take photos of birds on the other side also along the canal again people are often here so the birds are not scared of people in fact sometimes they even come to you like there were a few ducks which came along and i they probably came because they were expecting bread. Lots of people like to feed the ducks and the birds around here. So the animals are used to lots of people. And we have left the canal and are now on another golf course. So we're making all of the golf courses today. We often get quite a few animals here. Quite often a lot of insects. They've got lots of flowers being a golf course. It's very nicely kept. However, today it's a very cold overcast day. I doubt, I haven't seen many insects. So we probably won't find many insects, but hopefully the birds will come out and we'll photograph them instead. And we got a few photos on the golf course, but not that many. The best one being of a robin, but we also got a mushroom and a slug. So, some interesting photos. Now we're back on the canal and we're heading to the wildest part of our walk. But before we get to the wild area, I just found a family of moorhens. So there's two parents and two chicks, and they are so cute. They're tiny chicks, and I'm surprised at this time of year that they've got them, but... The weather has been a bit crazy, so it doesn't really matter when you have your chicks. It'll always be cold and wet. So there was two of them, but they're so cute. They're just black and fluffy with like a bald head. So one of them was being fed by the parent. So I got quite a lot of film of that and I tried to get some photos. So yeah, enjoy the more hens. <laughs> And we are now in the wild field. It is still a field, but it's not kept at all. There's no animals here. It's a very wild field. So on this wire behind me, I don't think you can see it, but there is a kestrel. I've taken some photos and just from looking at the back of the camera screen, I can see there's a huge amount of chromatic aberration. And this is one of the disadvantages of the budget lenses. Their coatings often mean that you get purple outlines around thin objects when it's in bright light so there's quite a lot of chromatic aberration meaning those images are not really usable and I just took another photo of a crow and a pigeon in a tree once again a lot of chromatic aberration now you may be hearing this and being like oh no <laughs> there's so much chromatic aberration it's that kind of purpliness around the thin objects like the wire and the thinner twigs on the tree but there is a way to solve this obviously in post in editing you can remove it it takes a lot of effort and time and so I don't bother um, but the other way to solve the problem is to not take photos of things against the plain sky now I've taken these two photos to show you what it's like and I, I may not get rid of the photos. I often take photos which have chromatic aberration. I just keep them for personal pleasure just because they were nice to take. They're nice memories and it's fine. But if you do want to get rid of it and you want to get competition photos or really sharp photos, then 
what you want to do is you want to find perches and positionings where you can get it so that there's something behind the bird, say trees or grass, anything really that is not the sky because the sky is the brightest thing and it does cause the most chromatic aberration. And we are now on a farm and it seems to be grass cutting day. They've cut all their grass on one side, so that's interesting to know. So in today's walk, we definitely tested the Canon 75 to 300 millimeter lens. We tried it with wildlife, we tried it with insects, we tried it with plants, and in conclusion, it is still a good budget lens. And it's a very good lens to start off with, especially if you're just a hobby photographer. However, we have come across some issues with the lens being chromatic aberration and the lack of focal length is quite a bummer in my opinion. Obviously for a kit lens, you get what you pay for. So if I find anything else, I will slideshow it at the end of the video and make sure to go and check out more of my videos. I've reviewed this lens in full. If you want to go see me sitting down inside talking about the lens in more detail, Thank you so much for watching, like and subscribe and enjoy the rest of your day.